Hello, and thank you for becoming part of the Compassion and Choices Volunteer Action Network. The energy of dedicated supporters like you drives our movement and our efforts to make sure that people have the options and care they want at the end of life so that no dying person suffers needlessly. Compassion and Choices is the oldest, largest, and most active organization working to improve care and expand options for the end of life. And we couldn't do this work without you. Your commitment and enthusiasm have a huge impact on building the foundation for success in your state. Today I'll share with you some best practices and examples of how Compassion and Choices volunteers have effectively utilized these tools in other states. But before we get started, let me give you a quick overview of the difference between petitions, tabling, and canvassing. Petitioning is the simplest of political acts. A petition is a written document signed by a large number of people demanding some form of action from a government. Like letters written to elected officials, petition signatures are closely counted by public officials and legislative staff. Strong community support demonstrated through large numbers of petition signatures can help politicians feel more comfortable su supporting a controversial issue or feel more nervous opposing an issue that's popular with their constituents. Tabling and petition signing go hand in hand. Having a table gives you the opportunity to bring medical aid and dying issues into your community in a friendly and visible way. It also gives you a base of operations for your petition drive and allows people to explore and self-serve. And finally, it's a distribution point for information and materials. And canvassing is a more direct and often the most successful approach because it involves going door to door asking people for their support. This video presentation will walk you through some very important tools to help you build support for medical aid and dying legislation in your state. Specifically, we'll talk about the Petitions, Tabling, and Canvassing Toolkit, which is Chapter 2 of the Larger Volunteer Action Network Toolkit, a guide to volunteer advocacy, which you can find on Compassion and Choice's Volunteer Resource Center webpage. This valuable training will help you connect with people in your community who are supportive of or interested in learning more about medical aid and dying. The actions we discuss today will not only help you identify community members who support the full range of end-of-life options, these actions will help guide your efforts to educate your community and recruit more volunteers to join you in this important work. Before we get any further, let's review the objectives of this session. By the end of this training, you'll have really clear expectations and clear goals. You'll know what petition drives are. You'll know all about tabling. You'll know how to get started with canvassing. We'll do a role play where we're tabling at a farmer's market. And we'll connect you to additional public outreach resources. So to get started on any of these public outreach efforts, make sure that you have realistic expectations as well as clear goals. To set your expectations, keep in mind the following. Some conversations you have with people may be very brief, but even those can be powerful. Some people may just want to sign the petition or pick up materials and keep moving. Others may want to stop and chat for a brief while. People may just want to walk by and give a thumbs up. Some may want to argue with you. In those cases, just smile and talk to the next person. Some may not stop or even acknowledge you at all, and that's just fine too. The important thing to remember is that every interaction, no matter how brief, positive, or negative, is not wasted. If 10 people walk by without acknowledging you, they still saw you engaged in a civic activity, and they know that you care about medical aid and dying. And one last helpful tip. We call it the rule of thirds strategy. This rule says that one-third of people will strongly support our cause, one-third will not support it or oppose it, and one-third will strongly oppose our cause. You will be most effective if you spend your time talking to the top two-thirds of people, the people that strongly support or are unsure of their support. If you spend time educating those who support our efforts and bringing on board those who, who are unsure, that's 66% of the population that you can bring into this issue. De debating or arguing with or trying to persuade the one-third of people who oppose medical aid in dying is not only draining on your energy, 
It's a waste of your valuable time that you could spend educating a person who's unsure about the issue and who could ultimately support us by signing a petition or ultimately voting in our favor. Okay, so here are some basic goals to keep in mind when you're collecting signatures or when you're tabling or when you're canvassing. Find supporters who will sign your petition in your neighborhood, at farmers markets, in front of grocery stores, at health fairs, etc. Identify and recruit possible volunteers to help on the campaign. Identify and recruit allies, for example, influential community members or medical or legislative champions for medical aid and dying. And increase public awareness of your state's compassion and choices efforts. Let's talk a little bit more about petitions. Compassion and Choices recommends that you choose between two basic types of petitions, general support petitions and legislative petitions. Talk to your state volunteer manager about which one is right for you. It depends upon how you wish to submit the petition and whether legislation is under consideration in your state. So first we'll talk about general support petitions. General support petitions ask people to sign in general support of medical aid and dying, but not for specific legislation. If you are gathering general support signatures, you should be ready to answer basic questions about compassion and choices and medical aid and dying policies. Alternatively, legislative petitions support proposed medical aid and dying legislation or seek the creation of specific legislation. It's important to check with your Compassion and Choices volunteer manager before drafting or circulating a legislative petition to be sure that you're using the most current and effective language to support medical aid and dying in your state. For legislative petitions, you should be able to answer specific questions about the legislation you're supporting and be ready to explain your support for its provisions. Always, always, always make sure to send copies of all signed petitions to Compassion and Choices. Make sure you're courteous and respectful whenever you ask someone to show support with a signature, no matter their reaction, and use the most current Compassion and Choices approved language in your petition. You can do that by reviewing the latest fact sheets on medical aid and dying, which are available and regularly updated on the Understanding the Issues webpage of the Compassion and Choices website. And never hesitate to contact your action team leader or Compassion and Choices regional campaign manager with any questions you have. A carefully presented table with clipboards and handouts gives important brand visibility to Compassion and Choices and the end of life options movement. Examples of events where you can have an impact by tabling include senior fairs, farmers markets, in front of grocery stores, or other places where people gather. And I'd like to share with you a story that one of my colleagues, Joe Barnes, told me. Not too long ago, he was tabling in support of the end-of-life option legislation at the West Hollywood Farmers Market in California with two other volunteers. They were collecting petition signatures, and somebody walked up and began asking questions. Pretty quickly, it became clear that the man disagreed with the medical aid and dying legislation, and he began to argue with one of the volunteers Joe was tabling with. The volunteer remained very professional. He did his best to calm the gentleman, and ultimately, a security officer came over. According to Joe, who is a seasoned organizer and tabler, this is about as uncomfortable as it gets. People who are opposed to our issues are generally polite. If you come across someone who is opposed to medical aid in dying, acknowledge their concern and thank them for visiting your table or for taking the time to speak with you. But as we mentioned in the rule of thirds, do not engage in an argument. The good news is that we've found that the majority of people you speak with will be supportive or at least open to medical aid and dying laws. So Joe gave me a list of best practices you can follow to ensure that your tabling is easy and effective. One, don't think about tabling as setting up materials and sitting down to wait for people to approach you. Your chair is there but you should be standing and greeting people as they're walking by and inviting them to pause and think about the issues and learn more. Two, you may be nervous about speaking to strangers and that's totally normal. Just remember, you're having conversations about an issue you care about. After two or three conversations, it'll become easier and more natural. Three, smile and make eye contact with people. Similarly, pay attention to people's body language and engage them accordingly. 
If somebody is clearly in a hurry, cut to the chase. If they seem interested, spend some time asking about their story, listening to them, and talking about the issues. 4. Arrive at your tabling event with a clear message and a short pitch to draw people in. But again, pay attention to how they respond to what you say, and fine-tune your pitch as you get an idea for what resonates with them. An example of a pitch is, Hi, will you please sign our petition? This may seem very simple and general, but rather than get a quick no or I don't have time right now, it generally results in people asking, what is it for? This buys you the time and opportunity to answer and engage the person with greater detail. Five, plan for the weather and dress accordingly. You'll be out there for a few hours, so you wanna stay warm, you wanna stay cool, and you wanna stay protected from the elements. Six, tabling with two people is better than just one. Because as you approach people, you can play off of one another in your pitches, you can reference each other's conversations, and then finally, because people passing by may feel more comfortable talking with a couple of people rather than just one, it makes it a lot easier. And seven, not all venues will allow you to table at their events. But don't be discouraged. You can always set up a table on a public sidewalk right outside the main entrance of an event where people are coming and going and are more inclined to slow or stop as they pass by. But be sure not to block the main entrance to the event. Canvassing is a more direct approach and often the most successful towards raising public awareness than tabling because it involves going door to door and educating people directly and asking for their support. Many people appreciate the personal neighborhood touch that canvassing brings, but others are bothered by being disturbed at home. Try to use good judgment and follow the tips for a safe, successful canvas provided in our toolkit. Canvassing differs from tabling that instead of engaging people in a public setting, you are at their homes. So keep in mind these important safety measures as you prepare to canvas. Only canvas in an area or neighborhood that you know, like where you live. Never canvas alone, always go with a friend or colleague. Don't knock on a door if there's a no soliciting sign or if there are loud pets, a closed gate, or other obstacles present. Never go inside a house, even if you're invited. And finally, a best practice for canvassing is to rehearse your talking points several times before engaging the public in conversations about medical aid and dying. Now we'll do a quick role play so you can get an idea of what a successful conversation might look like when you're tabling. Hi, I'm Sally. Would you please sign our Compassion and Choices Petition of Support? Hi, Sally. What's the petition for? We're collecting signatures of support for the Medical Aid in Dying campaign here in New York. It's our belief that terminally ill people shouldn't have to suffer needlessly. Do you have any interest in signing to prevent the suffering of dying people? But isn't that suicide? Actually, no. People who seek medical aid in dying want to live, but they're dying of a terminal illness and they want the peace of mind that medical aid in dying can provide them. Medical aid in dying is an end-of-life option already authorized in several states, and only terminally ill people with a prognosis of six months or less are eligible. So we're collecting signatures to encourage local legislators to support this option here in New York. Wow, I didn't know anything about this. Yeah, many people don't, even people who have personal experiences with really difficult deaths. In fact, I was one of them, and I became interested in this issue after watching my dad go through a really painful dying process. I found that so much of his suffering could have been alleviated if we would have had the right conversations with his doctor and if he had had the option to pursue medical aid in dying. So that's why I'm here. Sure, I'd be happy to support that. Is this petition for a ballot measure? No, but that's actually a really good question. This petition helps us grow the movement and it makes sure our lawmakers know that we want them to pass medical aid and dying legislation in New York. That's great. So actually, we're also working on passing a local resolution of support within the Albany City Council. Being able to show that we have support locally for the issue will help us eventually find legislators who are willing to help pass legislation in the state. But if it's a state issue, why would you try to pass a local resolution? It's actually another really good question. 
So when le legislators at the state level are considering legislation, especially about issues that they think are controversial, they look to elected officials in their districts to take the temperature of their constituents. And a local resolution sends a really clear and powerful message of support for medical aid and dying to those state legislators. Any chance you'd like to volunteer to help out with this effort? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I think it's a really good thing to support, but I have a lot on my plate right now. But you know, a friend of mine is really involved in city politics. She might be helpful for you to contact. Can I get your email address so that I can uh, have you connect us tomorrow? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Yeah, thank you. Are you guys here every weekend? Yep, every weekend from 10 to noon. Good to know. I might be able to help out on some future weekend. That would be excellent. Any time you can spare would be great. Um, when I send you that email, we'll set something up. Great, thanks. Thank you so much. There are a few important takeaways from this video. First, the person who passed by the table was engaged by the simple act of signing a petition. This is an easy step for people to take. Second, even though he stated that he couldn't volunteer, he did know a possible ally who could be very helpful. And finally, after a pleasant exchange of information, the passerby decided that he actually could see himself volunteering with Compassion and Choices in a capacity that made more sense for him. Now that we've talked about these actions in more detail, take some time to read through the Petitions, Tabling, and Canvassing Toolkit for more tips and helpful checklists. Ask your action team leader or volunteer manager for tabling materials including petitions, our quarterly magazine, palm cards, brochures, and buttons. And review and print out the most recent fact sheets from our website, which is located at www.compassionandchoices.org backslash understand-medical-aid-in-dying. And this concludes the Volunteer Action Network training and we are excited to work with you to expand end-of-life options in your community. Thank you for all you are doing to push this movement forward.